Okay, you win. Okay, I have two M4 Mac Minis at my disposal. I have the M4 Pro version, and I have the base model £599, $599 version, which is incredibly good value for money. However, today I want to focus on the M4 Pro version because, well, it arrived first, and this cost me £2,899, and that's still a lot of money for basically that. You get this and you get a power cable, which means to that you need to add a mouse, a keyboard and a monitor. So it's quite an expensive setup and I want to know what does it take to break this thing? Now looking at the comments from my unboxing video of this Mac Mini, there were three things that stood out that you wanted. One was performance testing, number two was comparisons with previous models and number three was does this thing make any noise? What, what is the thermal performance like? Do the fans spin up? that kind of thing. So in this video, I'm going to test it against the M2 Pro Mac Mini and just for kicks, my very expensive M3 Max MacBook Pro. And I'm using three apps to test this, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro and Lightroom. Now, just a very quick note, I am not your typical benchmarker because I find benchmarking incredibly tedious and it it's a real skill. There's loads of different things that you have to do. There's loads of mitigating factors. So this is very much a, it's a realistic, you know, kind of down the pub type conversation test, if that makes sense. But the things I'm throwing at these computers are generally things that I do and it's real world usage. And towards the end of this video, I will try and kill this thing with a real stress test. Before we get into this, just a very quick word from today's sponsor, which is RoboForm. If you're still storing passwords on post-it notes or in your brain or on a great big spreadsheet, you need a password manager. That's exactly what RoboForm is, and it's the most affordable and one of the most fully featured password managers I've ever found. You can put anything in there from your login details to your secret notes, anything digital that you don't want people to get hold of, you just chuck it into RoboForm. You can share passwords securely with friends and family, and there's an emergency access feature, so if the worst happens and you can't get into your vault for whatever reason, you can have someone designated as the person who can in your absence. But one of the best things is the one-click login feature Feature, which does exactly what it says on the tin, one click and bang, you're straight into your favorite website or web app. They've got 24 seven support, so if anything goes wrong with RoboForm, which is very unlikely given my experience with it, you do have someone to talk to. And the best news is I've got you an awesome deal. This really is unmissable. Go and check it out in the description. Now that I've had the M4 Mac Mini for a few days, I feel a bit more qualified to talk about the design. And firstly, it is perfectly sized. Again, if you just look at the difference between the M4 Mac Mini and the M2 Mac Mini, this design was around for about 14 years, I think, a long, long time. This is how big the Apple Silicon Mac Mini should be. It's perfect. I love the front-facing ports. I know some people don't like the fact we have the headphone jack there, but that's the way it is, I'm afraid. The power button, still doesn't matter. However, the only thing I have noticed is that occasionally I touch it by mistake or I press it by mistake when I'm lifting up the Mac to put a, a USB-C cable in. That said, pressing it once does nothing. You have to press it and hold it, so that's not a big deal. I do wish it had an SD card slot on here like the Mac Studio. That's something I completely forgot about in all my excitement unboxing it last week, but yeah, I, I, that's one thing I wish this had. An SD card slot would have just been, it would have finished this thing off. However, one thing that I cannot get across in this video, because it does not do it justice, any imagery you've seen of the M4 Mac Mini, trust me, is nothing like when you get it in your hands. It is just so, so small. However, I know that bothers people, particularly when it comes to thermal management. So does this very, very tiny frame mean that this spins the fans up more readily? Because the M2 Mac Mini, I've never heard the fans on this. Ever. This is the M2 Pro version. Never heard it. Never heard it on the M1 version either. Does that happen with this now that there's less internal space? And does it get warm enough for the throttling to happen? You know, does this does the chip start slowing down because this gets hot? That's what I wanted to find out. So let's get into this testing. So these first tests were done between the M4 Pro Mac Mini and the M2 Pro Mac Mini. I will be doing the exact same thing with the base model Mac Mini very soon. So 
make sure you hit subscribe and the bell not to miss that. I know a lot of people are wondering what you get for 599. That's coming very, very soon. And just a very quick note on the specs here. So this is a spec'd up M4 Pro Mac Mini. It's got the 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU, 64 gig of unified memory, and a two terabyte SSD. Now again, I'm not your kind of atypical benchmark tester person because, well, I only have the Macs to hand that I can test this against. And this one, the M2 Pro version, isn't quite the same in terms of specs as this one. So this only has 16 gig of unified memory and it has a 512 gig SSD. So in theory, it's not, well, it's not a fair test at all, is it? But that should mean that this smashes this, surely. The first test is my standard Final Cut Pro test where I take a piece of 10 minute 4K 10-bit footage and export it and see how long it takes, basically. The one that I used was actually a YouTube video that we've published on this channel. So I chucked a load of extra graphics on top just to basically just to fill it out and you know, give these things something to do. And then I exported that file on both of these. One thing to know is that for some reason on both of these Mac Minis, I couldn't screen record me exporting the video file, it wouldn't let me do it. As soon as I started doing the export in Final Cut Pro, it just it didn't work. It, it didn't go past 0%, it just stopped. I've not had that before. It didn't happen on the M3 Max MacBook Pro. In fact, I've not had it on any of those Final Cut Pro tests I've done in the past, but on both of these, it didn't work. So if you think you know what that was, let me know in the comments. It might be the Final Cut Pro version. Who knows? But in terms of the timings, the M4 Pro Mac Mini took three minutes and 27 seconds to export that file. And during that time, the CPU averaged around about 20% and the GPU topped out at about 80%, but it kind of kept ramping up and slowing down and ramping up in that respect. Basically, completely untroubled and a pretty good export time. And no, there wasn't a single murmur from the fan. The M2 Pro Mac Mini was pretty much the same in terms of CPU and GPU usage levels, but it finished the export in four minutes and 12 seconds, which again, isn't bad at all, but it does show you the difference between these two in terms of where we've come from M2 Pro to M4 Pro. And once again, this thing didn't make a sound. Onto the Lightroom test, and I took 100 raw files and exported them all at once to large JPEG format. That's not a massive task, but it should be completed relatively quickly. The M4 Pro Mac Mini did that task in just 23 seconds, which is really quick. The M2 Pro Mac Mini did it in one minute and seven seconds. So quite a big difference there. And that, again, that's important if you do a lot of photo editing and you need to bash out these photos very quickly once you finish with them. The M4 Pro is significantly quicker than the M2 Pro. And yes, once again, they were both completely silent. Then onto Logic Pro. And if you're not aware, Logic Pro is a DAW, a digital audio workstation where you can make music, you can produce podcasts, all that sort of stuff. I've used it for years and years and years. And for that reason, I went to town on this. Now, I did a music production stress test on the M2 Pro Mac Mini last year. And I got a little bit of criticism from people who said, you didn't do enough. You didn't put enough stuff into the tracks. Okay, you had loads and loads of tracks and soft synths and all that sort of stuff, but there was no MIDI going on, etc., etc. So to cut a long story short, this time I made a 128 track project and all of those 128 tracks had something in them for four minutes. It's basically a four minute horrendous sounding song that included MIDI parts, audio, AI drummers, no really, loads and loads of stuff going on, loads of plugins, etc. And both of these machines had zero problem with it whatsoever. I built the track on the M4 Pro Mac Mini and it never slowed down. The fans never came on. I kept adding things in, adding tracks, turning plugins on, bringing up all of the, you know, the, the EQ, the compressors, all the soft synths that were running, all of the graphics were silky smooth. It just worked utterly perfectly and it was completely silent. Next, I exported that entire horrendous sounding four minute song to an MP3 file. The M4 Pro Mac Mini took 53 seconds. The M2 Pro Mac Mini took one minute and 39 seconds. So again, a very big Big difference. The most amazing thing is that throughout all of that testing, the CPU and the GPU in both of these machines was just, it just wasn't really troubled. You know, the GPU would kind of spin up, like I say, to 80, 90% occasionally, but the CPU would just kind of sit there at 
20%, 10% sometimes, it might creep into 30, 40. These things are just chilling. So in terms of M2 Pro versus M4 Pro, even though they're very different configurations, they've both got the same amount of headroom. And that is the most incredible thing about these. The stuff that I was doing with these two Macs wasn't troubling them. It was just scratching the surface. The difference is that the M4 Pro is quicker at doing certain tasks than the M2 Pro as it should be. But what happens when you bring a very expensive M3 Max MacBook Pro into the mix? This is a spec'd up 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro. The only thing that I didn't fully spec up was the, well two things, the storage because I'm not a millionaire and secondly the memory. So this has 64 gig which is the same as the M4 Pro Mac Mini so it's quite a quite a fair test and I ran those three tests through this. For Final Cut Pro, the MacBook Pro did the export in three minutes and 57 seconds, which is 30 seconds slower than this. That Lightroom export of 100 photos to JPEG took 23 seconds on this, which is exactly the same as this. And finally, exporting that massive Logic Pro project on this took 56 seconds versus 53 seconds on this. So what conclusion can we draw there? Well, basically the M4 Pro chip is clearly on a par with the M3 Max chip in certain scenarios, particularly with audio and video in terms of the stuff that I was doing. Your mileage might vary, but they're not that far apart. And in some cases, this is better. So the big question is, how do you break this thing? Remember, up to this point, we haven't heard the fan on this at all. Nothing at all, no signs of throttling. So I, if it was happening, I couldn't tell at all. So I thought, what if I start up Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, Lightroom, and as many apps as I normally use throughout the day in the background, and get them doing all of that stuff at once. So have that 128 track Logic Pro arrangement playing in the background, have, the 4K 10-bit multicam, there were three feeds of 4K 10-bit footage in that Final Cut Pro project. Have that running in the background as well and playing back. And let's let's just export the entire two and a half thousand raw photo library from Lightroom. Have that going as well and have, you know, iPhone mirroring and Notion open and Slack and Chrome and everything else. Surely that would make this sweat. Not really, although the fan did come on when I started exporting stuff at the same time. So I basically had all that stuff running and I started exporting the Logic Pro file to MP3 and the that you know, Final Cut Pro project to an MOV file and those two and a half thousand raw files to JPEG. So once I started doing that, the fan kicked in a little bit, but it wasn't particularly noisy. It got a bit warm as well, not too hot, just just warm basically. But the key thing was nothing really changed on the system itself. It was still very responsive. I could still do things. Again, if throttling was happening, it wasn't noticeable at all. So for me, that is absolutely a stress test and it passed it with flying colors. I think we can safely say that thermals and fan noise on the spec'd up M4 Pro Mac Mini isn't a problem. If, you, if you've got the budget for it and if you've got the use case for a Mac Mini of this magnitude, you're not gonna have a problem. It's gonna be probably the best computer you've ever bought in your entire life. And it will last you for a very long time. I think the way the M2 Pro Mac Mini performed in this test demonstrates that this is still a very good buy. The big question is, how does this entry-level 599 model fare with the same test? And that video is coming very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button not to miss that video. In the meantime, Time, if you've still got some time, I've been documenting the testing process that I went through for this on my second channel. That's the vlog channel, it's a behind the scenes thing, and it goes into detail about what I was doing in Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro. I think you might find it interesting, so hang around for a link to that video in a couple of seconds.